everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor Joy. Um, I'm going to play two pieces for you. Um, we will be talking a specific bow technique. Uh, now you listen to these two pieces and tell me which bow technique we are going to talk about. Number one. Number two. So some of you might have noticed or recognized the tunes. The first one was a souvenir by a Czech composer Adradella. And second one was a May song, which can be found in Suzuki Book One, um, one of the common repertoire for beginner violinists. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support, for your kind donations here, and also my parent page and my patron page, saying to me kind questions, comments, emails, volunteering with your time, booking lessons with me. I really, really appreciate. So we're going to talk about sound production specifically bow technique when it comes to sound production. Now often, whether you are a beginner, intermediate or advanced player, we feel like we know how to produce somewhat decent sound or beautiful sound, but when it comes to specific passages, somehow the sound breaks. Why is it? So of course one could practice repeatedly many, many times and then somehow figure it out too, but it would be a better approach if we know exactly what kind of technique we're talking about. So in many other of my videos, we talked about sound production because it's a big part of the beautiful violin playing. When it comes to a beautiful tone production, it has to do with the three things. Bow weight, how heavy you put weight, or bow speed, how fast you move, and bow a contact point, seeing where the hair is touching on the string, whether it's in, the, in between or closer to the fingerboard or a bridge and so on, which we call the contact point. But um, when, it, when, when past that one, there are actually more than those three points. Um, but we're putting in those three big bracket, big categories. But for example, when it comes to bow speed, it comes with a bow distribution, how much bow length each note should get. Not only that, also when it comes to contact point, and um, it depending on how, how fast or how short the note is, the contact point has to be adjusted because depending on the bow weight, it the bow weight when the bow weight and bow speed changes, the contact point changes too. Now one could talk endlessly about sound production. It could go for hours and hours, but we're gonna talk about specifically today bow speed. Now this is what common theme of the bow technique was these two pieces. Now let's say um you know how to produce beautiful tone when it comes to long, long tone. But as soon as when you come different kind of rhythm, such as May song. We often have a problem to keep the beautiful tone that we could do in, for example, twinkle, twinkle. Where it use same bow speed and, and about the same length of the bow. So the, the cause here is a bow speed has to be changed. So we're playing, for example, the May song. First one is a dotted quarter note, which has a one and a half bit. One and a half. Second one is an eighth note, which has only half bit. Which means a third of the previous note, which means if we want to be aligned the same where we started, that's the first note. If we want to start, go back where it was after the second note, we have to move our bow three times faster. If we do not, if we keep the same bow speed, it ends up being like this. Which is still we have enough bow, but if we keep going like this. The second one. And then ultimately we run out of bow. Yeah? So, that's why we have to learn how to adjust the bow speed, yeah? So now here, 
And, and another thing, even when you play this um, souvenir by Dardella, I move fast up bow. Because in up bow, I only use a, a two beat. Down bow, however, I have to use four and a half beat or almost a little over a four beat. So, which means I need to slow down the bow speed twice. If I keep the same bow speed, same thing, uh, just like it happened with Mason will happen, which is one, two, I ran out of bow already. Either I sound choked, oh, it's too late, I try to hold it or I have to change the bow. Changing bow is okay, but whenever we change the bow, there is unwanted a little friction, that interruption of the tone. So if we can keep the bow with the adjusting bow speed, would be great. Now, we also know when we change the bow speed, let's say from, let's go back to the Maison. If we change the bow speed three times fast in this case, down bows one, two, three, four. We're moving up bow three times faster than up bow. When you, when you move your bow fast, it gets naturally louder. Right? So to avoid, because the fast speed uh, increased that, um, the tone um, volume too. So to avoid that one, what we have to do while moving our bow three times faster, we have to make the bow lighter by physically raising uh, elbow and the wrist a little higher by physically taking the weight off by doing that not only we're making the bow light also we're tilting the bow touching the less hair yeah yeah but by doing that one when the bow is very light when bow becomes very light the same contact point where it was here does not work anymore because if i make the bow light it's gonna whistle Therefore, I have to move our contact point closer to the fingerboard. Then go back. Such kind of um, bow speed adjustment can be practiced with a simple open string. So you do, you either, if you're having trouble yourself or your student, just a simple bow exercise. It does not even have to use whole bow because that can be hard for the first time. Just um, you use the middle section of the bow, but make sure you use about the same amount of bow. And then we want to start and come back where we started just by adjusting the bow speed and contact point. So we do one, two, three. Then make the bow lighter by raising it and then adjust the contact point closer to the fingerboard. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. Same thing, similar idea you're playing an advanced repertoire, such as a souvenir. Now here, we have to move fast bow, and then now we need to uh, slow down the down bow speed twice. It's a reverse, it's like we're doing fast up bow, and then slow down bow. Now here, when we slow down, if we keep the same bow, bow weight, it gets softer. If we keep the same bow weight but slow down the bow speed twice, it gets softer. In order to make it even, what we do is move our bow fast. And as you slow down the bow speed twice at down bow, you have to add the bow weight to make it sound a bit about the same. As the bow gets heavier, the contact point gets closer to the bridge. Here. on and on like that and then if you there are all of course a lot more to be talked about but see if you can just experiment that one for now don't worry too much about contact point if dealing bow speed contact point at the same time feels too much just focus on the bow speed see the again key is back to the a specific length of the bow see if we can do let's say count while counting bow you do three beats down bow and the fourth bit, up bow. One, two, three, four. And then do the other way. This time, first one, fast down bow, last three, slow up bow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then just teach yourself how you can adjust the bow speed and then see if you can keep the same tone. 
that's when it comes to adjusting the bow weight and contact point yeah i hope uh, this gave you uh, some ideas of how to keep your tone nice and beautiful even though um despite of all this different bow speed and rhythm and dynamics thank you for watching and hope to see you again happy practicing bye bye